simplify 4 over the square root of 10. There are two rules we have when we're dealing with radicals and fractions when we want something to be simplified. We may not leave a radical inside a denominator, and we may not leave a fraction inside a radical. So in this problem, having the root 10 in the denominator is not allowed. We want this to be written so that there are no radicals in the denominator and so that there are no fractions inside of radicals. Now, the method that we're going to use with a problem like this is we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of the fraction by some quantity in an attempt to get rid of the radical in the denominator. We know that we're allowed to do this. There was a rule that we learned a long time ago that said we could multiply the numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same number, and it would give us an equivalent fraction. So here, what we need to do is we need to pick the appropriate quantity that we're multiplying the top and bottom by. Now remember the goal is to get rid of the radical in the bottom. And one way that we can get rid of radicals is when we have the square root of a perfect square, we know that we can evaluate that. So what we wanna do is we wanna multiply the top and bottom by some quantity so that we end up with a perfect square inside the radical in the bottom and then we can evaluate that square root. So we're always gonna multiply the top and bottom by the square root of something, and our hope is to end up with a perfect square in the bottom. Now here, if we multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 10, that's going to achieve the goal. In the denominator, if we have the square root of 10 times the square root of 10, we end up with the square root of 100, and we notice that 100 is a perfect square. That's really the goal. We need to multiply the bottom and the top by something so that when we multiply the bottoms, we end up with a perfect square. Now in the top, four times root 10 is just four root 10. But now we can evaluate that radical in the bottom. The square root of 100 is 10, so we end up with four root 10 over 10. And then there's one more thing we can do here. The four and the 10 are both divisible by two, so we can reduce them by two. Four tenths becomes two fifths. And now once we've done that, the numerator is two root 10 and the denominator is five. And this is our final answer. We no longer have a radical in the denominator. The denominator is a whole number and we don't have any fractions inside of radicals, so we are good to go. And this is gonna be the process that we're going to use for most of these problems. I wanna point one thing out that happened to be true in this problem, but it's not always going to be true. In this problem, you may have noticed that the thing that we multiplied the top and bottom by was the denominator that we started with. We know that if we have the square root of a number and we multiply it by itself, that's going to give us a perfect square. And this will always work in problems like these, but there are certain situations where we don't just want to multiply by the denominator that we have, because there might be a smaller number that we can multiply by. So just keep that in mind as we move forward and do some more problems.